What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday here on the Calgary Barbell YouTube channel. Now this series is where we take user submitted videos from you and we put them up on the screen behind me and I try to analyze them, give you guys some things to work on in terms of becoming more efficient, consistent lifters and improving your technique. So. If you're interested in submitting your videos, go ahead and send them to Calgary Bar, or no, don't do that. Send them to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. I'm sorry, you guys, it's a little early. Send them to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. Please, please, please. Um, if you guys are interested, Taylor Shadgit and myself are gonna be in the UK doing some seminars. Um, April 26th, 27th in Basingstoke. May 5th in Edinburgh, sorry, May 4th in Edinburgh, May 5th in Glasgow, um, and uh, we'll be kind of touring around the UK. So we'll be in London um, on Monday the 29th, gonna be doing some lifting there. And um, yeah, probably lifting throughout the week. We'll be through Oxford for a little bit. Uh, it should be good, really looking forward to it. So if, uh, if you guys are interested in following along on that or trying to meet up, you can hit me up at uh, Bryce underscore CBB on Instagram and uh, give us some suggestions on what kinds of good food there is to eat and stuff like that. So we're really looking forward to the trip, really looking forward to the seminars. Um, we've got some pretty great material prepared for you guys and we're excited to present it. So if you're coming out, we'll see you soon. Um, without any further ado, we're gonna get to it here, get to our form check Friday. Our first video comes from Austin Walker. He says he just started pulling sumo this week um, for this for a five by five at RPE seven. All right, let's see what's going on here, Austin. Looks pretty darn good to me. I think subsequent reps better than rep one. Uh, we could probably pull the slack out of the bar a fair bit better. That'd be something that I would definitely put some work into. And this first rep, um, the knees are coming just a little bit too far forward. You're pulling in too far. Reps after this first one, see how we pull in really far. We end up um, in probably what a lot of people would call a really good position. What the hell's going on? Oh boy, sorry guys, I'm messing up my shortcuts. Uh, yeah, so we see these knees just a little bit too far out over the bar, these hips too low and Watch what happens as he starts to pull. Shift. There, now we're in a stronger position. So everything kind of shifted back on the heels, the knees came back, the butt came back, um, and that would be probably more where I would try to make your start position consistently. And if we watch the rest of these, everything's back way further on subsequent reps. So try to make that first rep look more like the rest of the reps. Uh, I think you're kind of pulling yourself a little bit too low, um, but not pulling enough tension into the bar, not pulling the slack out of the bar enough. Because it's still a very kind of jerky motion off the floor, even on these subsequent reps. I think we could do a better job of, of kind of easing the bar off the floor, I like to say. Just being a little bit patient with things um, in terms of the speed of the bar, uh, sorry, the speed the bar moves off the floor. But um, other than that, looks quite good, quite good. All right, our next one comes from Super Clasher. And that is all the description I have. This is from Super Clasher, guys. All right, let's see what's going on here. So, Again, kind of tough to tell. Can I make this uh, loop? There we go. So let's take a look at our starting position here. So first off, we're starting to pull before the hips are all the way low. So the upper back is pulling the bar off the floor, which is probably not gonna be your strongest way uh, to initiate the deadlift. I think that if you can, again, do a bit better job of pulling the slack out of the bar, I think you can pull more extension into your back and uh, likely pull those shoulder blades back down a little bit. Because here, and it's tough to say from the side, but it looks like there's a solid maybe inch or so between the shin and the bar. 
uh, meaning that it's it's pretty far out in front of you. It's going to be pulling you forward as you start, and we can see that here. Those hips kind of come up behind you. Things get pulled forward. Um, so that would be the first thing I would I would look at working on is get that bar closer. Um, pull harder in with the upper back before you start and try to initiate the, the deadlift by pushing the floor away. Think less about pulling on the bar and more about just pushing the floor away. Uh, and I think that probably go a long ways for you. All told, I mean, that's a pretty sound looking deadlift altogether. Kyle Ang. Now this is an interesting one. I kind of read this email before. Um, Kyle's doing safety bar high box squats to technical failure. He's been learning to uh, box squat because free squatting has been bothering his knees. Um, he talked to Dave Tate and Dave Tate really helped him out by suggesting a higher box with a wide base that he can keep his calves touching. Um, just so he knows whether or not his knees are moving forward or not. Um, the goal is to use a lower box without needing the sort of calf touching feedback. He doesn't plan to compete. He's a tennis player who takes his fitness more seriously. Um, he thinks he can see a lot of what's off, just not sure how to correct things. I realize I'm not pausing as long as he should. He just needs some discipline. Um, he says that his knees coming forward would, can, would be considered technical failure for him. Um, not rooting and his feet are coming up consistently. All right, there's a lot in there. There's a lot to unpack, so let's, let's start taking a look here. So I think, I think one thing that I would I would probably do, um, and this is kind of how I run Form Check Friday, is like if I was coaching you, what would I say? What would I do? Um, the first thing I would do is try to try to tell you and show you that um, free squatting is not inherently going to bother your knees. Um, Generally speaking, and I think that the the avoidance of free squatting in and of itself could be detrimental. Thinking and associating free squats with knee pain um, can help create the pain experience and really sort of um, embed that into your psyche. So I think what I would probably have you do is just start doing some very light free squats to show you um, that that's probably not what bothered your knees. Probably what bothered your knees was too much intensity or too much volume free squatting. Um, to me, I mean, this this looks fine for what it is. Uh, I, I don't know that I would coach things much differently um, other than I, I don't really think that there's a need to squat that wide for you. I think that um, it looks like you're having a lot of issues because of the, the position that you're you're kind of choosing to put yourself in. And we can see this when we see on the side angle here. Uh, in order to reach back so far without any forward knee travel, we're sacrificing a lot of back position. Um, and I think that that uh, is, is potentially an issue. Uh, it's gonna make you a little bit less efficient in how you can brace your trunk and how you can hold things, especially with a safety bar where that fulcrum's a little bit in front of you, kind of pulling, pulling you forward. Um, so I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot there that I would that I would try to do to get you um, first off to, to to make you not associate like a fear of pain with free squatting. Uh, I think it would be really important to do some light, um, nice full range of motion, not worrying about knee travel. Um, I, I also would say that. Generally speaking, knee travel and knee pain are not closely associated enough um, for us to say that, okay, you know, if, if you make sure you sit back, you won't have knee pain. Uh, and if, you, if your knees go forward, you will have knee pain. I don't think that that's, um, I, I don't think that you can say that. 
Um, but anyways, I, I digress. Uh, in terms of how you're squatting here, it's there are a lot of restrictions placed on the movement because of these um, sort of conditions. I know you don't plan on competing. Um, so, I mean, there's there's that. If, if you're getting what you want out of this, then continue to do it. Um, if you want my powerlifting advice as a powerlifting coach on a powerlifting channel, uh, I would try to get you free squatting again, try to get you off this box, try to get you letting your knees forward. We'd narrow your stance. We'd ditch the SSB bar. Um, I'm not Dave Tate. I would do things differently. I'm not saying uh, that he's wrong. He's coached a lot of great lifters and knows a lot. Um, I just would do things differently, very respectfully, but differently. All right, uh, I'm gonna move on. Our next one here is from Philip, and what's Philip doing here? Let's take a look, Philip. Tarps optional, Philip. Some sumo deadlifts, it looks like. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is this is really great positioning. Um, really great patience off the floor. We can see the hip and I'm assuming knee angles about there. Um, but we can see how little that changes as he initiates the lift, right? Everything kind of stays in that same plane. Knees are locking a bit early and then hips through. We're patient off the floor, we're pulling the slack out of the bar. Position's not changing once the pull is initiated. Um, yeah, this is this is fantastic, Philip. Honestly, the only thing I would do here is keep practicing, keep deadlifting, keep training. There's uh, there's no no technical flaws that I would analyze and and try to have you to change here. That's that's just. Just good lifting, man. I like it, I like it a lot. Keep doing what you're doing. Our last one today comes from Gilad. And he's doing a sumo, some sumo deadlifts as well. So in contrast to Philip, um, first off, very narrow grip. I would probably widen that up and it's gonna allow you to get your back set a little tighter. As well, when we're initiating this pull here, you can see again, there's a little bit of space between the bar and the shins. So I think we could be pulled in um, tighter and have the bar closer to the body. Decent starting position. Again, I think those shoulders, uh, the shoulder position is really holding you back because a, that bar is too far away, uh, and B, the grip is very, very narrow. You can also see how we're initiating the pull um, with kind of like, like jerking into it like that. Um, this one, I'm not sure you locked out. Yeah, so again, those shoulders are really, I think probably the biggest thing and the first thing I would tackle. Because now we're getting to the point where we can't pull the upper back through and finish the deadlift and finish these shoulders because they're so far out of position when we start that we're not getting full lockout. Yeah. So that'd be the biggest thing I'd work on, Gilad. Gilad, Gilad. Is locking those shoulders in, learning to create tension off the floor before you initiate the lift. So by pulling those shoulders in, um, creating tension against the bar, tension through your legs, hips, hamstrings, um, and then thinking about pushing the bar off the floor. Before, I mean, in, in this video here, we're really kind of jerking into it and getting that, that punchy kind of movement. Um, but I, let's take a look at this first one. And see, I'm not sure that lockout, I'm not sure that I would have white lighted any of these with lockout. And I'm not saying that to be cruel. Um, it's just, if, if you do plan to compete, um, those probably wouldn't be considered locked out in a competition. So shoulders, shoulders, shoulders. Widen that grip a little bit. 
get that bar a little closer and then pull those shoulder blades in, pack them down uh, and tighten up that upper back so that when you go to pull through, you can finish. And I do believe that's it for today, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in, for sticking with me through all 15 minutes of me picking apart people's techniques and preaching my, uh, my coaching rhetoric. But uh, yeah, if you guys wanna have a discussion about anything I talked about today, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. If you saw anything that you think I didn't, um, or you agree or disagree with anything I said about um, anything, really, go ahead and, and, and leave that below. I love having discussions with people. Um, even if your point of view differs from my own, uh, I think that I think that our YouTube comments section specifically here at Calgary Barbell has disproven that the internet is all garbage comment sections. I think we do a good job um, and thank you to our community for that. So um, leave a like if you liked it, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for more great content and uh, we'll be back soon. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.